welcome back to my channel it's really patootie here and i'm back with another video it's good to see you i hope you're happy to be here because i show sure am and i'm ready to share with you my detangling tips so if you're interested in hearing what i have to say stick around and don't forget to subscribe okay so we're gonna break it break it down into three parts first tools then products and then technique and then i'm gonna get into a little bit of a q a so i'm gonna do that at the end of this video so starting with the tools y'all i got me my favorites boom i got this from my local beauty supply store it is essentially just a brush that has flexible um rolls like this yeah this is what it looks like and the bristles they bend they're not they're not very stiff it's flexible then the next brush, which is actually one of the more notorious brushes within the natural hair community, our Bone Denman brush. It's similar to the brush I just showed you that I prefer, the Denman brush also has flexible bristles. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, there we go. It also has flexible bristles, which I'll explain the importance of that in a second. You can actually, I don't know how many of you already know this, but you can take this part off open this up and take out some of the bristles if you feel like this is too um, concentrated or too dense to be brushing through your hair next up we got another well-known little guy our tangle tamer tangle teaser tangle this is my tangle tamer but the original is the tangle teaser this kind of has the same concept going down again you'll notice the flexible bristles on this little tool here um it's easy to kind of hold on to while you're raking this through your hair the last definitely not the least is our fingers so your fingers are also a detangling tool now things to consider when choosing which tool you prefer so if it is snagging out strands that is your concern then you want a detangling tool that's very flexible so that as you're brushing through your hair if you come across a knot or a tangle as you're brushing through you're not going to snag your hair out so if you're concerned about shedding and breakage then a very firm or hard bristled brush is not what you want you want something flexible like the tangle teamer tangle teamer 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 <laughs> You want something flexible like the Tangle Teaser. On the other hand, if your primary concern is thorough detangling, which is what my concern usually is, then you want something with a harder or more firm bristle. So this brush, it's not totally firm, but it's firm enough that I know that I'm really getting those tangles out. But you have to be careful, again, that you're not yanking out knots and tangles as you're going through. A tool is important to invest in and take your time in deciding what you want to do, but this is not all there is to the game. There's a lot more that should go into it, like the products you use and your technique, which is what we're going to go into now. So detangling products, there are so many things out here that can be used as a detangling aid. You have leave-in conditioners, you have regular conditioners, you have deep moisturizers, you have masks, you have hair treatment, all of them in the game. They want to help you, help yourself. So my favorites, Kinky Curly Not Today. This is not only a leave-in conditioner, but it is marketed as a detangler. I typically use this after washing and conditioning my hair if I'm going to style it. This helps a ton. Usually by that point, my hair is pretty much well detangled from the deep conditioning process, but this just helps it take it to the next level. Another product that I love to use that I don't have here with me is my Herbal Essence Conditioner. Now this is just a regular conditioner. You slap it in your hair after shampooing, you rinse it out. It has such great slip that you really can't go wrong with that product. So a lot of people might not know this, but shampoos could potentially help with the detangling process. Now it's not its primary purpose, but shampoos that lather well, which is why I don't normally use sulfate-free shampoos, shampoos that, that lather well help with finger detangling. And then on the other hand, if it's not a drying shampoo and it actually aids in moisturizing, it serves as a pretty decent aid for detangling with your fingers and then of course we have co-washes like this as I am coconut co-wash and deep conditioners or mask treatments such as 
Um, one of my recent favorites, the Shea Moisture Manuka Honey and Mafura Oil Intensive Hydration Mask. So if you don't know by now, <laughs> When products are hydrating and moisturizing, they typically, hint, hint, help with detangling. Okay, now that I have rambled on about products, our next and final section before the Q&A is your technique. Now, technique is very, very important, if not more important than the products and the tools that you use. How you detangle your hair, honey, will help you in the length retention because it will keep you from snagging off and breaking your own hair, your own self, self-sabotaging, that's what I call it. So I actually recorded a little bit of a demo to demonstrate and show you guys how I actually detangle my hair. shampoo your hair 
deep conditioning, deep conditioning style or whatever the case may be for you personally. So yeah, if you want to do it before, you can or you can do it the way I do it. The next question says, should hair be stretched dry for trimming or moisturize after detangling? I don't think I understand that. Should hair be stretched? Or moisturize oh after detangling girl yes of course after detangling that you want to stretch that bad boy out as much as we love our natural curl form our natural curl pattern our TWA's our little um top top but is it a bun? our puffs and whatnot and wash and goes they're great for styling and appreciating every once in a while but they actually um, are the cause of single net single stranded knots um, as well as tangles and all that business that you know you worked so hard to get rid of so after detangling I would recommend stretching your hair now you don't have to trim your hair every time you detangle for me that would be almost every week I would have nothing on my head if I did that if you plan to trim detangling should come before that how do you deal with single stranded knots oh my gosh Look, does anybody else know? I know how to decrease them, but they still exist. They exist for everyone. In fact, right now, the ends of my hair are really bad. I'm in need of a trim. The last time I trimmed my hair was right before graduation, which was in May. So, it's almost October now. So, I definitely need another trim, and I have a lot of single-stranded knots. So, the first thing you want to do is keep your hair stretched. I think that's the most... Um, effective way of avoiding those single stranded knots and then the, uh, the other way is to moisturize your hair so keep it moisturized and then also trimming your hair quite regularly regularly could be anything for anyone though it depends on it, it depends on you so regularly can be a couple times a year regularly can be like once a month um, trimming your hair definitely helps you get rid of those single stranded knots and keep your ends healthy is it necessary to always detangle with a tool or just your finger? There are so many people on one side that are finger detanglers to the bone. I don't like to use tools on my hair, that tools ain't great. And saying all this stuff, you know, they're all high and mighty because they only use their fingers to detangle their hair. And then there are people on the other side that are like, I cannot do that. My hair is way too nappy. I have four Z hair. I have no way I can use my fingers and stuff like that. How about both? You know, it's like Montague, Capulets, Butter Side Up, Butter Side Down, Cardi B, Nikki. <laughs> it's like a binary. Finger detangling or tools. You don't have to stick to one. Whatever works for you. But hopefully in the demo that I had, you have a good idea of how I use both and that can help you determine which you prefer. So it's all about personal preference. Okay, all right, we're almost we're almost at the end. I hope are you still there? The last and final question is actually a really good one and it essentially asks what is my detangling process after a very long protective style? When I think back on it, because I, I I've mostly just been doing wigs and weaves lately, and so I'm not forced to have a protective style that goes on for way too long, such as braids and twists and stuff like that. But thinking back um detangling process after doing that is I I feel like I would need to do a video separately on this but to answer your question I would pre-poo definitely can't skip that right after I take down those braids I use whatever oils I have laying around warm it up to do a hot oil treatment and then I also add in a leave-in conditioner like this bad boy this 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 Kinky curly not today and do finger de finger detangling. You don't want to start off with the tool. It's too risky. Mm -mm. It's too risky. Whatever the heck that cakey stuff is at the root of the braid. Yep. Use your fingers. And then you can shampoo and carry on. Yeah. So y'all, this concludes the end of this video. I hope it was as helpful as I intended for it to be if you guys have any additional questions feel free to just comment them down below i will be happy to answer you hopefully 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 i will see you guys soon again take care i love you guys and i'll see you in the next video good night